Principal Homesteader. Uh, doing a little weed eating tonight and thought I'd take a little little break. Hot, it's hot, it's hot. Uh, but wanted to cover a little topic here in the orchard. <clears throat> so we have a small orchard, oh, around 50 trees, different varieties, uh, peach, apple, plum, pear, cherry, and then in between the trees, there's different uh, fruiting perennial shrubs, blackberry, all the different berries and all the different stuff like that. We'll do a full tour soon because I, I think this is something that people will enjoy. <clears throat> but today's topic, we're going to talk about picking the proper variety of tree, in particular trees. So years ago, before I really knew what I was doing, uh, I would go to Lowe's or Walmart or Home Depot and buy whatever fruit tree they had, right? And they would have uh, the most popular, you know, fruit tree. The, what you see in the store for apples, that would be what they would try to sell, right? Because that's what people want. Well, guess what? <clears throat> A lot of varieties won't do well in your particular area. So the first thing you need to look at is your growing zone. We're central Oklahoma. We're growing zone 7B. Um, the other thing I would keep in mind is there are certain varieties of trees that um, have been bred to be resistant to certain disease or uh, pests. <clears throat> One of the biggest problems here in Oklahoma probably the whole state has, is cedar rust. So there's cedar trees all over the state. I mean, I know in a lot of places in the United States, they, they're cedar trees, but um, we get these cedar trees put off spores. The spores, when they're trying to pollinate, the spores poof out. It travels through the air. <clears throat> and these spores land on particularly fruit tree leaves. And Chief, if you want to come in here, let's take a look at this thing. <clears throat> Just the general overall look of it, you can see these brown and yellow leaves. Um, this is a golden dorset apple. And if you see here, you can see it's it's got you know, almost a fungusy raised scarred area almost here uh, on the bottom and then on the top. Uh, you know, it's yellowed and brown. That's when the app, when the cedar tree spores travel through the air, they land on these leaves and it's a, it's a disease. <clears throat> it, it greatly, it greatly slows their growth. Um, it can make them not produce any fruit and ultimately it'll kill the tree. And I'll show you an example here in a minute. <clears throat> but so my point of this video is to say before you plant any fruit tree find a variety that is resistant to whatever issues you have in your in your growing area so like i said this apple this cedar rust um there are varieties of of fruit trees that are resistant to it and i I'm not a biologist or, you know, I don't, you know, breed my own fruit trees or whatever, but, um, so I can't explain it. I just know that there are varieties of trees that are resistant to this. So this is a golden dorset, if my records are right. And you can see it's, it's not terrible, but it's certainly affected by the cedar rust. Uh, if you want to follow me over here, we're going to go over here to watch your, watch your step there. We're going to go over here. This is a yellow delicious apple. And you can see just a general appearance. See how thin it looks. Those are the leaves were so damaged that they've fallen off. Um, you can see on this one in particular, 
there's new growth here, maybe four or five inches of new growth at all the at all the tips, most of the tips of this tree. And those were the new growth that was after the spores were sent up in the air, and so they're unaffected. But this tree is never gonna do anything. It's it's gonna grow very, very slow. It's probably never gonna fruit. If it does fruit, it'll be very poor. I my my guesses are that this will die at some point. Another example, let's just walk right over here to this tree. This is a red delicious apple. And you can see it's full. Uh, there's, I can pick out from here a few spots of maybe rust, but um, it could be bug pressure. It could be other things. My guess is, is um, it's probably just a bug or something other than cedar rust. Um, but you can see how this is a much, obviously, a much healthier tree. And um, it's growing well. It blew over a few years ago, partially in a, in a windstorm. So I have it staked up. I think it's going to be fine. But um, you can just see there's no rust on the leaves. It's doing well. I've pruned this one back. I'm trying to keep them fairly small. So, um, or manageable, I should say. So this one has been pruned back considerably in the last couple of years. You know, I prune back a little bit every year. Um, whereas these two here, the previous examples, I haven't touched. No pruning because they haven't grown enough. They're not putting on enough um, enough growth to be pruned. Um, so I haven't touched them at all that I can remember. Maybe a broken branch here or what, or something like that. But no, no, um, you know, pruning to keep to keep the tree in check. If you look over here, this is another red delicious. And you can just see how it's very full. This one uh, has been in the ground a few years longer than the, the other one I showed you. But you can just really see how full this is. And it is producing apples. Um, there's no rust on the leaves. Uh, and it's it's really doing fantastic. And I have I have taken a lot of of this tree out by pruning um, the last several years because I don't want them to get so big that they're unmanageable uh, or I can't pick the apples or, you know, stuff like that. Um, but doing very, very well. Um, a couple of other examples I could give you is right here. This is a tree I planted last fall. This is an Arkansas black apple and it is known to be resistant to uh, cedar rust like the red delicious and you know for a two-year-old tree or a year and a half year old tree I mean that thing's doing pretty pretty good um, whereas over here I have a, a, a peach tree that I've noticed over the past couple of years the rust has been getting worse and worse and worse and this year, it had leaves on it this year. It had fruit on it this year, a few peaches. And obviously you can see here, it's a goner. The rust finally got to it. You know, that thing's cooked, it's done. So this tree will come out obviously, cause it's done. And as much as I hate it, I've got two yellow delicious and this golden dorset. And I've got a lot of time and energy, uh, you know, effort and, and money even wrapped up in them. But if they're never going to do anything and produce fruit, that's kind of, you know, all for nothing. So I will cut those three down as well, probably this fall when it's a little cooler. And then um, get some better varieties in here that will flourish in my area, right? Resistant varieties. Um, um, so what have I done different? How did I learn, um, this, this simple piece of advice? Um, I really didn't learn it by talking to other people. I learned it because I found an online, um, tree nursery. Uh, they're in Missouri 
Stark Brothers Nursery. Um, they, I think, are America's oldest tree nursery, if I remember right. Um, and they are absolutely fantastic. And the quality of tree you can buy from them, and it sounds crazy, buying them online and having them shipped to your house, and you think they would show up and they'd be torn to shreds, and they just, it's the way they package them, everything is fantastic. Their website is fantastic. I'll put some clips on here um, uh, of an example of their website and how you can search by disease resistant fruit trees. So if you're looking for a certain um, tree, uh, whatever fruit it is, you can put in your growing zone and search specifically for disease resistant trees or you know that whatever it is, it's a pest or disease. Um, their customer service has been awesome. I just can't say enough good. And as my trees either die or get torn up in a, in a tornado or an ice storm or whatever, as I take out any tree, everything I'm putting back in the ground is from Stark Brothers. Um, I'm not sponsored by them. I'm not, there's no affiliation or whatever. I just, when I see a great company with a great product, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm all over it, you know, and I, I share it share it with anybody that's willing to listen so um anyways that's my two cents for today uh, i hope this helps somebody out there that's thinking about putting in some fruit trees fall and early spring are the best times so check out uh i'll, I'll leave a link also in the description to stark brothers nursery and their website they've got facebook and youtube as well and um check them out and um they'll be, I feel like they'd be a really great resource for you. So, um, appreciate you being here. Thanks for listening. And I'm going to get back to weed eating. So have a good night, everybody.